Hello, Bella Vista. This is J.B. Portello. Welcome to In the Know. This program is produced after each monthly board meeting to give you a summary of the topics and the events going on at the Property Owners Association. In addition, these episodes are posted on the Facebook pages of the POA as well as the Bella Vista Community TV station. So sit back and enjoy being in the know. Hello, Bella Vista. This is JB, and we're back for another version of In the Know. I want to welcome my guest, Tom Judson, COO. Hey, Tom, how's it going this morning in the rain? It's going well. It's going well. I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, I know. I know. Um, You know what? I think we had a very, I don't know about you, but I think we had a very productive uh, board meeting last week. I would agree with that. Yeah. So how about us doing a, a recap? What happened? Well, a couple of different things is um, uh, the approval of through eminent domain of some land at Chelsea and Tudor, which is going to the city and they're going to use it uh, for a tri- fire training center. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was part of their bond vote that they held uh, earlier this year. Uh, and this is going to make our firefighters you know, more educated, uh, better trained. Uh, and I've been told it's going to have a positive impact on our ISO ratings, which could lower the insurance rates for every homeowner. Absolutely. And I was on a, a kind of a grassroots um, group that helped get the bond passed and all of that, which was really fun. And the other part of that that's going to help both the POA and the city is that we'll be able to use that facility for our surrounding neighborhoods and can train them there. So our folks don't have to go all the way to Springdale to train. So thank you. That yeah. was good stuff. Yeah. It's a, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, when, when they're, when they have to go so far away and if there was a really large emergency, then they would have to travel all the way from that location where they could, they could be in the middle of training and they could halt training because of an emergency and then leave and, and they'd be in our community. So it, it's a good thing. Uh, had to do some uh, wrangling because it's an eminent domain situation, but uh, we were able to, to make it happen for them and the board voted. And so I'm really pleased with that. You know, it, it, to me, it, it is awesome because of the synergy, the city and the POA working together. So Absolutely. Absolutely. So what uh, else happened? Well, one of the other things is uh, we actually had to uh, approve an emergency capital item. Um, the water department is having an outstanding year. They are $644,000 uh, better than budget on uh, the bottom line. So they're doing very, very well. Uh, with the addition of uh, more homes being uh, built. uh, And also part of our budget, we included uh, the water detection equipment and a dedicated uh, individual that works on water water detection. Uh, And so what's happening is we are busy, so busy. And so we had to approve some uh, emergency capital items so that we can get an additional vehicle so we can have some additional staff because we have so many additional hookups going on now. And because of the leak detection efforts that we've made, we have more leaks that we have to repair. And that's a good thing. uh, But we want to make sure that we still maintain the high level of service that we provide so we have to get some more vehicles. Plus we had to get some more trailers uh, or replace some trailers um, uh, to the trailers that we had are 18 years old and, and they've seen better days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, the board approved that. Uh, and then the next item is uh, the Scottsdale Bridge. We're moving forward on that. Uh, we hired Craft and Tall to do the work for us. Uh, we went out to bid. Uh, we contacted seven uh, different companies uh, to solicit bids. Only, Unfortunately, only one uh, submitted a bid, but they're qualified. Craft and Tall Engineering have worked with them before. And best of all, they came in under budget. Uh, so we're moving forward with that. Uh, and uh, we hope to get that work done uh, pretty quick at Scottsdale because we'd like to 
have that buttoned up and have that all completed for our golfing uh, customers. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Recently you had somebody at um, BV, uh, the COVID thing and Mm -hmm. the temporary shutdown and that sort of thing. So tell us about that. Well, we've had everybody tested and uh, nobody else has uh, come up positive. So that's, that tells us that we're doing the right things. You know, we're wearing masks, uh, we're cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Uh, and, and so we're doing all the right things. Uh, you know, we don't know where the person uh, caught it. You know, they could have caught it going to the grocery store. Who knows? Uh, you just don't know. But uh, we, we, we weren't forced by the state to close. We felt it was the right thing to do. It was a very, we took a precautionary approach. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was going to be good for our, our customers, our members, uh, and our employees. Uh, so fortunately, nobody else has tested positive. Cross our fingers because this is a you know it's a big thing that's going on in our nation. Uh, but uh, we're reopened. Uh, we're following the same safe procedures to make sure that when our customers come in, that they can feel comfortable, that they can feel safe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and then I think we're doing a fun thing coming up. Uh, tell us about this uh, fishing derby tournament. Yeah, so we've done it a couple of years. Um, uh, fortunately, the state uh, provides us with fish free of charge. Uh, and we we hold it at Metfield. Uh, yeah. We don't interrupt any of the golf. And uh, it is on August 7th at 8 a.m., uh, we're going to practice social distancing to make sure that everybody is separated. Uh, this event is primarily for our membership. Probably 90% of the people that show up are members. 10% will be non-members. We have to allow non-members uh, simply because since the state is providing the fish for free, we have to have it open. Uh, but with that being said, it's majority of the people that are showing up are, are our members. Uh, it's a fun way uh, you know, for the kids to – to catch fish. It's a smaller size pond. So a lot of fish, small pond is a good situation for the kids to catch, catch fish. Uh, what kind of fish? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. I've never caught uh, a fish in my entire life. So I'm not <laughs> the right person to ask, but uh, we have Rick Eccles, who's our lake ecologist and he does a fantastic job and, and they get the uh, fish in there and, and the kids have so much fun. Is this catch and release? Uh, yeah, I, you keep on asking these hard questions that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just curious. All right. Well, when you, usually know. in a derby like that, you know, a tournament, that it sometimes it's catch and release. And so anyway, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, come out and find out and bring your uh, rod and reel and have a good time. All right. That sounds fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, was there anything else that we need to share with Bella Vista? Um, from- Just, uh, you know, uh, I think the last thing is, is with the restrictions, going back to the COVID situation, with the restrictions, we, you know, our, our property owners, our members uh, have been really great about uh, complying with the, the directives put out by the governor about mm-hmm. wearing masks. We just, you know, continue to remind people, Bring your mask, bring your mask, bring your mask. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do everything possible uh, to stay in compliance with the governor. I know there's some places that, that don't uh, do that, but we really feel it's important that we follow the directives of the governor. And you know what, Tom? Have you seen some of the creative masks that are out there now? I mean, yeah. Well, my wife tells me that I look better looking with the mask covering most of my face. So. <laughs> You're funny. Okay. Well, as always, I enjoyed talking with you today, and I'm hoping that this gets out and helps Bella Vista understand for those that couldn't be at the meeting and didn't see the live stream and Mm -hmm. haven't seen it online that we gave them a nice recap of what happened. Absolutely. And uh, come on out to BV. We're open. Yes. Come out to Lake Point. We're open. We're safe. We're doing all the right stuff. Uh, the uh, the servers, they want to see you. The hosts, uh, you know, we want to take care of you. We want to service our membership. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, I think we're going to take a, a little quick break and then talk to uh, Alex Sanford 
uh, about some other incredible things that are happening. You got it. It was great to talk to you. You too, always. Hey, folks, we're back. And my next guest, uh, his name is Alex Sanford, and he is the PGA Scottsdale and Highlands Pro Shop Manager. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Hey. I'm doing great, JB. How are you doing today? Uh, wonderful. And in spite of COVID, uh, the rain's out there, and I'm happy about that. My plants are doing happy dances in the yard, and it's great. We can actually uh, use a little rain. Courses need it this time of year. So. Well, that's true. That's true. So, Alex, tell us about yourself. I don't think you've been on here before, and I want people to know who you are. Yeah, I'm Alex Sanford. I am the PGA Golf Personal at the Highland Scott Steel Courses. I've been with the PGA of America about 20 years, and I've been with the POA for the last three and a half years. Uh, I also am the tournament director for all the PGA events for 2020. Excellent. So tell us then, uh, you've got some tournaments coming up. You've got, what's, what's going on? Yeah, our tournament calendar is actually really, really busy over the next couple months. We're just, uh, just really starting to get ramped up. It seems something is going to be going on every week. So we've really got a packed under. Um, and this weekend, in fact, is our first of five big fundraiser events. Uh, this week is the Folds of Honor event on Saturday, August the 1st. Um, this is the event we try to raise some money for the Folds of Honor, which is a foundation that provides scholarships for families uh, falling in disabled service. So we really hope to have a good event for that. And raise lots of good money. That's the first one coming down the wire. Excellent. Really good event. Yes. You know, that sounds really fun. Uh, what else is coming down the pike? You said you had an awful lot of tournaments, tournaments coming up. Yeah, um, next one for our Folds turn is a parent child championship. For the first time ever, we are hosting a parent child championship at the Brittany Golf Course. It's going to be a whole event, uh, one parent and one child. If a parent has multiple children, we've got a way for them to play with uh, all of them. Um, should be a really good event. We've hosted uh, events similar to this over the years, and it's always been a really, really big hit. And we're trying to bring it to Vista and see if we can really get that thing going. It's fun for the kids, trying oh. to expand junior golf programs. Boy, I like the idea of it being a family thing. That's that's great. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. We, we try to get as much uh, family golf together as we can, you know, just to promote the game. And, uh, you know, golf is one of the most important things, I believe, that we get to do in the golf business. So I look forward to getting that one. So you said you had a way for multiple kids. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, that... if, uh, if a parent's going to play with multiple children, they essentially hit one shot if both children are able to play from it. So the adults only hit one ball off the tee. And if both kids play from it, he'll only hit one shot to the green. So you're not playing favorite between son, daughter, and things like that. They only get one shot. Both of them can play from it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, again, that sounds fun. Almost makes me wish I had a child that isn't 40 years old. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Just past the deadline. Now. Just past the age. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, And what else? What else is coming up? Uh, so we have several phrasing tournaments that we that the PA puts on every year. The first is the of Honor that I've already mentioned. Then we have um, an Alzheimer's Classic in the month of August. We've got Alley in Pink coming in October. Prostate Cancer Event in September and Veterans Day coming up on Veterans Day in November. Um, fundraising has a little bit more challenging with all the COVID things that we're dealing with. So. We need players, we need whole spots, we need everybody to get involved if they're interested in any of those events and uh, have any uh, questions about that stuff. They can contact me or they can contact the golf operations office and we'll give them all the information that they need. Well, you know, we, we mentioned a little bit, I think, when we were uh, putting this together about new formats. Is there something that's going to be different with these tournaments or how are you working it around the COVID stuff? Yeah, tournaments are very different this year. Normally we would have shotgun start or we start everyone at once. They all play at the same time. They all finish together. With the COVID situation, we have to avoid groups gather together. So we just have to send them off in tea times, just like a normal 
normal day of golf. So they don't start at the same time, so they have staggered finishes. Really, we have to cut off a lot of fun things, a lot of the social aspects of tournaments. You know, there's no life scoring. There's no eating together. There's no award ceremonies. So cuts off some of that stuff, but it's really what we have to do to run the events. And we play golf. We still have a little bit of food involved with it, but we cut off on the social and things like that. Unfortunately. But you, know, but you know, it sounds to me like golf is still really busy in spite of all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. On on nice day, we are still cranking around. You know, when we've been lucky enough to have been able to stay open through the pandemic. Uh, we've made a lot of a lot of adjustments in the things that we do to try to keep all the members and golfers and our staff safe with everything. So lots of cleaning. We've spread out uh, tea time in order to make sure that everybody can get their own golf cart. And we still plan on doing that. We've got that in effect, you know, for the foreseeable future. You know, it's just one more way Bella Vista works together, even in diversity. And Absolutely. Like so Absolutely. anything else you'd like to share today before we sign off? Um, no, nothing too much. Um, like I said, we need players for our events. We need whole sponsors if anybody wants to get involved and volunteer or anything like that. We would love to, uh, we'd love to talk to you about it. Love to help us out and, um, yeah, give us a call and we can figure some things out. Thank you so much for being with me today. Nice to meet you. And I'm sure I will see you probably with a mask the next time, but I will. Yeah, most see likely. You. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank Alex. You for having me. Uh huh. Thanks. So, Bella Vista, uh, I think that's it until we see you the next time. Stay safe. Mm-hmm.